In this video, we're going to look at the basic functions of the animation palette and um, what we typically refer to as animated GIFs. There was a more robust program or part of Photoshop uh, that was called uh, Image Ready, and it has now been removed for the most part from Photoshop because uh, since the Adobe folks bought the Macromedia products, they uh, with Flash and Fireworks and Dreamweaver, they clearly um, uh, feel that those tools work probably much better than a lot of the image ready functions here in Photoshop. So they've eliminated uh, them uh, since they were more or less a weak link. So what we want to do though is we can still, amongst other things, create basic animations. And so we want to bring up the animation under window. We want to bring up the animation palette. And um, that's what you see here. And um, when we start to create an animation, we have animation frames or cells. Here you can see that I have five of them. And uh, you can create as many cells or animation frames as you'd like. You can um, create them uh, by uh, either simply clicking the uh, little page icon which duplicates the selected frame. Or we could take um, a selected frame and I'll, I'll pick the very first one um, and simply drag it there as well. So either way you see it adds a new frame and uh, <clears throat> that's the easy way to do it. And once you have some frames in place then you essentially create the artwork for each frame in your layers palette and um, turn the layers palettes on and off so that what you want to see in a particular frame is visible. Now watch what happens um, when I, with my layers palettes, you can see that I actually created different versions of the artwork so that each one would have this little bouncing ball in a different place. And so if you look at the the animation uh, frames and you look at the layers you see they're coordinated together in the first animation frame the first um, ball is visible which is up in the corner in the second frame I turned off the first layer and turned on the second layer where I placed the ball down at the bottom of the frame <clears throat> and modified and squished it a little bit and then in the third frame, I have another layer where it goes back up again and so on through each frame and each of the layers, the appropriate layers are turned on so that I see what I want in that frame. And then, of course, once we have done that and we've got all the artwork and the layers organized I can play play the animation see right there <clears throat> and if it's done right in this case we have a very very simple animation there could be many more things going on than just one uh, bouncing ball but this covers the basics and so um, as it goes from frame to frame hopefully the ball appears to be bouncing around and uh, then I'll click the button to stop it again. So you have to start by building your artwork and uh, then um, you have the pieces that you need and then you can select each frame and turn on the appropriate layers so that the ball is doing, appears to be doing what you want it to do. So you coordinate between the animation frames and the layers. 
for the most part, that's really uh, the main part of it. We can go backwards, we can go forwards with our buttons here once we create our animation. <coughs> we can also set how long each frame displays separately. See, I have mine at a half of a second, and you can do it less or more. And again, pick each frame and set the time. And then we can also choose right here in the lower left corner to have it repeat once or repeat over and over again, or maybe uh, specifically three or four times if that's what you would like. So we can choose how many times it loops around. Okay. If we have extra frames, um, then we can simply drag them to the trash, like all of the palettes in the Adobe program. And um, that'll take care of that.